page 17. Chapter 3, Drainage. This chapter has nine pages and is read by Sheba. Friends, the term drainage describes the river system of an area. Look at the physical map. You will notice that small streams flowing from different directions come together to form the main river, which ultimately drains into a large water body such as a lake or a sea or an ocean. The area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin. A closer observation on a map will indicate that any elevated area such as a mountain or an upland separates two drainage basins such an upland is known as a water divide figure 3.1 shows the figure of a water divide an upland which is separating stream a from the stream b friends do you know the world's largest drainage basin is of the amazon river find out which river has the largest basin in india the drainage systems in india are mainly controlled by the broad relief features of the subcontinent accordingly the indian rivers are divided into two major groups the himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers apart from originating from the two major physiographic regions of india the himalayan and the peninsular rivers are different from each other in many ways most of the himalayan rivers are perennial it means that they have water throughout the year these rivers receive water from rain as well as from melting snow from the lofty mountains The two major Himalayan rivers, the Indus and the Brahmaputra, originate from the north of the mountain ranges. They have cut through mountains making gorges. The Himalayan rivers have long courses from their source to the sea. They perform intensive erosional activity in their upper courses and carry huge loads of silt and sand. figure 3.2 a picture of a gorge is given here in the middle and the lower courses these rivers form meanders oxbow lakes and many other depositional features in their flood plains they also have well developed deltas figure 3.3 Given here is a diagram which shows some features made by rivers. The source of the river is in the upper course. The middle course forms the meanders and the lower course it makes oxbow lakes and deltas. A large number of peninsular rivers are seasonal. as their flow is dependent on rainfall during dry season even the large rivers have reduced flow of water in their channels the peninsular rivers have shorter and shallower courses as compared to their himalayan counterparts however some of them originate in the central highlands and flow towards the west can you identify two such large rivers Most of the rivers of peninsular India originate in the western ghats and flow towards the bay of bengal In the box given here shown are the four drainage patterns The streams within the drainage basin form certain patterns depending on the slope of land underlying rock structure as well as the climatic conditions of the area These are dendritic trellis rectangular and radial patterns the dendritic pattern develops where the river channel follows the slope of the terrain the stream with its tributaries resembles the branches of a tree thus the name dendritic a river joined by its tributaries at approximately right angles develops a trellis pattern a trellis drainage 
pattern develops where hard and soft rocks exist parallel to each other. A rectangular drainage pattern develops on a strongly joined rocky terrain. The radial pattern develops when streams flow in different directions from a central peak or dome like structure. A combination of several patterns may be found in the same drainage basin. The Himalayan rivers. The major Himalayan rivers are the Indus, the Ganga, and the Brahmaputra. These rivers are long and are joined by many large and important tributaries. A river along with its tributaries may be called a river system. The Indus River System The river Indus rises in Tibet, near Lake Mansarovar. Flowing west, it enters India in the Ladakh district of Jammu and Kashmir. It forms a picturesque gorge in this part. Several tributaries, the Zaskar, the Nubra, the Shiok and the Hunza, join it in the Kashmir region. The Indus flows through Baltistan and Gilgit and emerges from the mountains at Atok. The Satlaj, the Bias, the Ravi, the Chinab and the Jhelum joins together to enter the Indus near Mithankot in Pakistan. Beyond this, the Indus flows southwards eventually reaching the Arabian Sea east of Karachi. The Indus plain has a very gentle slope. With the total length of 2,900 km, the Indus is one of the longest rivers of the world. Page 19 Figure 3.4 A map is given here which shows the major rivers and lakes of India. The major rivers of India which flows in the northern part of India are the Indus River with all its five tributaries namely Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Satluj and Bias. The Ganga River system has many tributaries which are Ganga, Yamuna, Sarada, Ghagra, Gantak, Kosi, Son, Chambal, Betwa. Brahmaputra is another river which flows parallel to Himalayas in Tibet where it is known as Sangpo and enters India from the Namcha Barwa Gorge in Arunachal Pradesh and finally drains in Bangladesh. Narmada and Tapi are two west-flowing rivers of India and there are many other rivers in peninsular part of India which are flowing eastwards in the Bay of Bengal. These rivers are Mahanadi, Penganga, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. There are a few man-made and natural lakes as well. Some of them which are located here are Vular Lake, Govan Sagar Lake, Govan Ballapant Sagar, Rana Pratap Sagar, Nizam Sagar, Nagarjun Sagar, etc. Page 20 a little over a third of the Indus Basin is located in India in the states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and the Punjab and the rest is in Pakistan. Do you know, according to the regulations of the Indus Water Treaty which was signed in 1960, India can use only 20% of the total water carried by Indus River System? This water is used for irrigation in the Punjab, Haryana and the southern and western parts of Rajasthan. The Ganga River System The headwaters of the Ganga, called the Bhagirathi, is fed by the Gangotri Glacier and joined by the Alaknanda at Dev Prayag in Uttarakhand. At Haridwar, the Ganga emerges from the mountains onto the plains. Figure 3.5 Given here is a picture 
of the confluence of Bhagirathi and Alaknanda at Devprayag. The Ganga is joined by many tributaries from the Himalayas, a few of them being major rivers such as Yamuna, the Ghagra, the Gantak and the Kosi. The river Yamuna rises from the Yamunotri glacier in the Himalayas. It flows parallel to the Ganga and, as a right bank tributary, meets the Ganga at Allahabad. The Ghagra, the Gantak and the Kosi rise in the Nepal Himalaya. They are the rivers which flood parts of the northern plains every year, causing widespread damage to life and property, but enriching the soil for the extensive agricultural lands. The main tributaries which come from the peninsular uplands are the Chambal, the Betwa and the Son. These rise from semi-arid areas, have shorter courses and do not carry much water in them. Find out where and how they ultimately join the Ganga. Enlarged with the waters from its right and left bank tributaries, the Ganga flows eastwards till Faraka in West Bengal. This is the northernmost point of the Ganga belt. The river bifurcates here. The Bhagirathi, Hugli, a distributary, flows southwards through the Deltaic plains of the Bay of Bengal. The mainstream flows southwards into Bangladesh and is joined by the Brahmaputra. Further downstream, it is known as the Meghna. This mighty river, with waters from the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, flows into the Bay of Bengal. The delta formed by these rivers is known as the Sundarban Delta. Do you know? The Sundarban Delta derived its name from the Sundari tree, which grows well in marshland. It is the world's largest and fastest growing delta. It is also the home of Royal Bengal Tiger. From the text. The length of the Ganga is over 2,500 km. Look at figure 3.4. Can you identify the type of drainage pattern formed by the Ganga river system? Ambala is located on the water divide between the Indus and the Ganga river systems. The plains from Ambala to the Sundarban stretches over nearly 1,800 km. But the fall in its slope is hardly 300 meters. In other words, there is a fall of just 1 meter for every 6 kilometer. Therefore, the river develops large meanders. The Brahmaputra River System The Brahmaputra rises in Tibet, east of Mansarova Lake, very close to the sources of the Indus and the Sutlej. It is slightly longer than the Indus, and most of its course lies outside India. It flows eastwards, parallel to the Himalayas. On reaching the Namcha Barwa, with an altitude of 7,757 meters, it takes a U-turn and enters India in Arunachal Pradesh through a gorge. Here, it is called the Dihang, and it is joined by the Dibang the Lohit and many other tributaries to form the Brahmaputra in Assam. Page 21 Do you know Brahmaputra is known as the Sangpo in Tibet and Jamuna in Bangladesh? From the text, in Tibet, the river carries a smaller volume of water and less silt as it is a cold and a dry area. In India, it passes through a region of high rainfall. Here, the river carries a large volume of water and considerable amount of silt. The Brahmaputra has a braided channel in its entire length in Assam and forms many riverine islands. Do you remember the name of the world's largest riverine island formed by the Brahmaputra? Every year during the rainy season, the river overflows its banks, causing widespread devastation due to floods in Assam, 
and Bangladesh. Unlike other North Indian rivers, the Brahmaputra is marked by huge deposits of silt on its bed, causing the river bed to rise. The river also shifts its channel frequently. The Peninsular Rivers The main water divide in peninsular India is formed by the Western Ghats, which runs from north to south close to the western coast. Most of the major rivers of the peninsula, such as the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri, flow eastwards and drain into the Bay of Bengal. These rivers make deltas at their mouths. There are numerous small streams flowing west of the western Ghats, the Narmada and the Tapi are the only long rivers which flow west and make estuaries. The drainage basin of the peninsular rivers are comparatively small in size. Narmada Basin The Narmada rises in the Amarkantak hills in Madhya Pradesh. It flows towards the west in a rift valley formed due to faulting. On its way to the sea, the Narmada creates many picturesque locations. The marble rocks near Jabalpur, where the Narmada flows through a deep gorge, and the Dhuadhar Falls, where the river plunges over steep rocks, are some of the notable ones. All the tributaries of the Narmada are very short, and most of these join the mainstream at right angles. The Narmada Basin covers parts of Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. The Tapi Basin The Tapi rises in the Satpura Ranges in the Betul district of Madhya Pradesh. It also flows in a rift valley parallel to Narmada, but it is much shorter in length. Its basin covers parts of Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. The coastal plains between Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea are very narrow. Hence, the coastal rivers are short. The main west-flowing rivers are Sabarmati, Mahi, Bharatpuza and Periyar. Find out the states in which these rivers drain the water. The Godavari Basin The Godavari is the largest peninsular river. It rises from the slopes of the Western Ghats in the Nasik district of Maharashtra. Its length is about 1,500 km. It drains into the Bay of Bengal. Its drainage basin is also the largest among the peninsular rivers. The basin covers parts of Maharashtra. About 50% of the basin area lies in Maharashtra. Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh. The Godavari is joined by a number of tributaries such as the Purna, the Vardha, the Pranhita, the Manjra, the Vain Ganga, and the Pen Ganga. The last three tributaries are very large. Because of its length and the area it covers, it is also known as the Dakshin Ganga. The Mahanadi Basin the Mahanadi rises in the highlands of Chhattisgarh. It flows through Odisha to reach the Bay of Bengal. The length of the river is about 860 km. Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and Odisha. The Krishna Basin Rising from a spring near Mahabaleshwar, the Krishna flows for about 1,400 km and reaches the Bay of Bengal. The Tangbhadra, the Koyana, the Ghat Prabha, the Musi and the Bhima are some of its tributaries. Page 22 Its drainage basin is shared by Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. The Kaveri Basin the Kaveri rises in the Brahmagiri range of the Western Ghats and it reaches the Bay of Bengal in south of Kudalore in Tamil Nadu. Total length of the river is about 760 km. Its main tributaries are Amravati, Bhavani, Hemavati and Kabini. 
Its basin drains parts of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Do you know? The river Kaveri makes the second biggest waterfall in India, known as Sivasamudram. The hydroelectric power generated from the falls is supplied to Mysore, Bangalore and the Kolar gold field. Find out friends the name of the biggest waterfall in India. Besides these major rivers there are some smaller rivers flowing towards the east the damodar the brahmani the betrani and the subarn rekha are some notable examples look at them in your atlas friends do you know 71% of the world's surface is covered with water but 97% of that is salt water of the 3% that is available as fresh water three quarters of it is trapped as ice lakes you may be familiar with the valley of kashmir and the famous dal lake the houseboats and shikaras which attract thousands of tourists every year similarly You may have visited some other tourist spot near a lake and enjoyed boating, swimming and other water games. Imagine that if Srinagar, Nainital and other tourist places did not have a lake, would they have been as attractive as they are today? Have you ever tried to know the importance of lakes in making a place attractive to tourists? Apart from attraction for tourists, lakes are also useful to human beings in many ways. Find out dear friends, lakes of large extent are called the seas, like the Caspian, the Dead and the Aral Sea. From the text, India has many lakes. These differ from each other in the size and other characteristics. Most lakes are permanent. Some contain water only during the rainy season like the lakes in the basin of inland drainage of semi-arid regions. There are some of the lakes which are the result of the action of glaciers and ice sheets, while the others have been formed by wind, river action and human activities. A meandering river across a flat plain forms cutoffs that later develop into oxbow lakes spits and bars form lagoons in the coastal areas example the chilika lake the pulikat lake and the kolaru lake lakes in the region of inland drainage are sometimes seasonal for example the sambar lake in rajasthan which is a salt water lake its water is used for producing salt Most of the freshwater lakes are in the Himalayan region. They are of glacial origin. In other words, they formed when glaciers dug out a basin which was later filled with snow melt. The Vular Lake in Jammu and Kashmir in contrast is the result of the tectonic activity. It is the largest freshwater lake in India. The Dal Lake, Bhimtal, Nainital, Loktak and Barapani are some other important freshwater lakes apart from natural lakes the damming of the rivers for the generation of hydro power has also led to the formation of lakes such as guru gobind sagar that is bhakra nangal project figure 3.6 given here is a picture of loktak lake page 23 activity is given here make a list of natural and artificial lakes with the help of the atlas from the text lakes are of great value to human beings a lake helps to regulate the flow of a river during heavy rainfall it prevents flooding and during the dry season it helps to maintain an even flow of water lakes can also be used for developing hydro power they moderate the climate of the surroundings maintain the aquatic ecosystem enhance natural beauty help develop tourism and provide recreation role of rivers in the economy 
Rivers have been of fundamental importance throughout the human history. Water from the rivers is a basic natural resource, essential for various human activities. Therefore, the river banks have attracted settlers from ancient times. These settlements have now become big cities. Make a list of cities in your state which are located on the bank of a river. Using rivers for irrigation, navigation, hydropower generation is of special significance particularly to a country like India where agriculture is the major source of livelihood of the majority of its population. River pollution the growing domestic, municipal, industrial and agricultural demand for water from rivers naturally affects the quality of water. As a result, more and more water is being drained out of the rivers, reducing their volume. On the other hand, a heavy load of untreated sewage and industrial effluent are emptied into the rivers. This affects not only the quality of water, but also the self-cleansing capacity of the river. For example, given the adequate stream flow, the Ganga water is able to dilute and assimilate pollution loads within 20 km of large cities. But the increasing urbanization and industrialization do not allow it to happen and the pollution level of many rivers has been rising. Concern over rising pollution in our rivers led to the launching of various action plans to clean the rivers. Have you heard about such action plans? How does our health get affected by polluted river water? Think about life of human beings without fresh water. Arrange a debate on this topic in the class. From the box, National River Conservation Plan that is NRCP. The activities of Ganga Action Plan, that is GAP Phase 1, initiated in 1985, were declared closed on 31st March 2000. The Steering Committee of the National River Conservation Authority reviewed the progress of the GAP and necessary correction on the basis of lessons learned and experiences gained from GAP Phase 1. These have been applied to the major polluted rivers of the country under the NRCP. The Ganga Action Plan, that is GAP, Phase 2, has been merged with the NRCP. The expanded NRCP now covers 152 towns located along 27 interstate rivers in 16 states. Under this action plan, pollution abatement works are being taken up in 57 towns. A total of 215 schemes of pollution abatement have been sanctioned. So far, 69 schemes have been completed under this action plan. A million litres of sewage is treated to be intercepted, diverted and treated. Exercise Question 1 Choose the right answer from the following alternatives given below. 1 of 1 Which of the following describes the drainage patterns resembling the branches of a tree? A. Radial B. Dendritic C. Centrifugal or D. Trellis Page 24 2 of 1 in which of the following states is the Wola Lake located? A. Rajasthan B. Uttar Pradesh C. Punjab or D. Jammu and Kashmir 3 of 1 The river Narmada has its source at A. Satpura B. Brahmagiri C. Amarkantak or D. Slopes of the Western Ghats 4 of 1 Which one? Of the following lakes is a salt water lake A. Sambar, B. Dal, C. Vular, or D. Gobind Sagar. 5 of 1. Which one of the following is the longest river of the peninsular India? A. Narmada, 
बी कृष्णा सी गोदावरी और डी महानदी सिक्स ऑफ वन विच वन अमंग्स द फॉलोइंग रिवर्स फ्लोज थ्रू अ रिफ्ट वैली ए महानदी बी टंगभद्र सी कृष्णा और डी तापी क्वेश्चन टू आंसर द फॉलोइंग क्वेश्चन ब्रीफली वन ऑफ टू What is meant by a river divide? Give an example. Two of two. Which is the largest river basin in India? Three of two. Where do the rivers Indus and Ganga have their origin? Four of two. Name the two head streams of the Ganga. Where do they meet to form the Ganga? Five of two. Why does the Brahmaputra in its Tibetan part have less silt, despite a longer course? Six of two. Which two peninsular rivers flow through trough? Seven of two. State some economic benefits of rivers and lakes. Question three. Below are given names of a few lakes of India. Group them under two categories: natural and created by human beings. A. Vular. B. Dal. C. Nainital. D. Bhimtal. E. Gobind Sagar. F. Loktak. G. Barapani. H. Chilika. I Sambar J Rana Pratap Sagar K Nizam Sagar L Pulikat M Nagarjun Sagar and N Hira Kund Question 4 Discuss the significant difference between the Himalayan and the peninsular rivers Question 5 Compare the east flowing and the west flowing rivers of the peninsular plateau. Question 6. Why are rivers important for the country's economy? Map skills. First, on an outline map of India, mark and label the following rivers: Ganga, Satluj, Damodar, Krishna, Narmada, Tapi, Mahanadi and Brahmaputra. Second, on an outline map of India, mark and label the following lakes: Chilika, Sambar, Vular, Pulikit, and Kolaru. Page twenty-five. Project activity. Solve the crossword puzzle. with the help of the given clues across first clue first clue nagarjun sagar is a river valley project name the river second the longest river of india third the river which originates from a place known as bias kund fourth the river which rises in the betul district of madhya pradesh and flows westwards fifth the river which was known as the sorrow of west bengal sixth the river on which the reservoir of indira gandhi canal has been built seventh the river whose source lies near rohtang pass eighth the longest river of peninsular india downwards ninth a tributary of indus originating from himachal pradesh tenth the river flowing through fault drains into the arabian sea eleventh a river of south india which receives rain water both in summer and winter twelfth a river which flows through ladakh gilgit and pakistan 13th an important river of the indian desert 14th 
the river which joins Chenab in Pakistan. 15. A river which rises at Yemnothri Glacier.